What is up campers? Thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I know it's on a Monday and I know it's a little weird and yesterday we were having so many problems with Facebook so I wanted to make sure I got out here and I still did the recipe. This recipe is phenomenal. Um, I'm doing it for the second time today. I'm falling in love with this recipe so just know this recipe is probably if not one of my favorites. It's a sweet, simple, easy recipe to do at home. Um, I know we said six o'clock, I know it's Monday. Um, it might be a little harder for you guys to join in. It's okay, this video is still gonna be on there. Um, remember to share and like this video uh, to enter into the giveaway. We are going to be giving another bundle giveaway. So we did just give away one of these bundles, uh, our viewer. Um, was from out of town, so we get to send her uh, one for hit, her to pick up. Um, so that means we have just this, this same bundle to give away again. So uh, make sure you share and like this video to enter to win this bundle, which is a hand mixer and a blender. Really good tools that we use here on Campuga. So you want to make sure you like and share the video so you can enter into this giveaway. This video is gonna be a quick one. I already pre-prepped everything like I always mention to you guys. Make sure you pre-prep pre all your ingredients to make it go quicker, it keeps the area cleaner, and you can move a lot faster. I appreciate you guys being here, so let's go ahead and jump into the recipe. So we are gonna be making some I Italian cannolis. Uh, great, great recipe. If you saw my picture on Cat Puga, they look amazing, they taste amazing. Um, I already started doing some around here and they're doing really, really good. They're holding up well. So let's go ahead and talk about our cannoli shell ingredients. So we have one three-fourths cup of flour. We have one and a half tablespoons of granulated sugar and uh, one fourth teaspoons of salt. We have three tablespoons of either butter or, what is this called? Shortening. Shortening, I already forgot already. Uh, we have one egg whole. We have egg white, another egg white, so two eggs total, one egg complete and one egg white, and one fourth cup of water. That's not included in the recipe, but I'm telling you guys because when I did the recipe yesterday, it needed a little bit more moisture. So I went ahead and added one fourth cup yesterday and it worked great. So make sure you add one fourth cup of water into your liquids. Uh, and then we're gonna go ahead and mix that up. For your filling, you're gonna use your uh, heavy whipping cream, powdered sugar, mini chocolate chips, cinnamon, and uh, powdered sugar, but we'll get into that in a second. Let's go ahead and work on our uh, cannoli shell. I almost said potato shell. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna use our- And ricotta shell. Oh, and ricotta. Wow, of course, I'm here to forget. Don't forget your ricotta uh, for your filling. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and work on our um, cannoli shell. You're either gonna use a food processor, a hand mixer. I wouldn't recommend doing this by your hand with your hand, but if you have don't have the options of not doing it with your hand or doing it with, only with your hand, go ahead and do so. I'm gonna use a food processor here. So I have one three fourths cup of powdered sugar. I have three tablespoons of butter or shortening. I keep forgetting. I have one fourth teaspoon of salt with one and a half tablespoons of sugar. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and blend this up first before I add my liquids into it. Alrighty, so I went ahead and blended all of my dry ingredients, including my shortening or my butter. Uh, what you are gonna notice that it is very coarse. Um, that's exactly what you're looking for. You're gonna kind of see like a crumble, a really light crumble. That's exactly what you're looking for. That's either the, the butter or the shortening breaking up within the, the flour. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add my one whole egg, my egg, one egg white, and my quarter cup of water. And then we're gonna go ahead and see all of that come together.
perfect. All right, so we have here our dough. I already have some here set aside for us. So this is exactly what this is. I'm gonna go ahead and put this aside because I'm still gonna use my blender. So the cool thing about giving away a blender for this recipe on our bundle giveaway is I use my blender to whip up my whipped cream. Instead of having my bowl here and trying to whip my whipped cream, if I put my heavy cream inside of my blender, I can just go ahead and press uh, start and then it'll make my whipped cream for me. So that's the really cool part. So here I have my dough. This is the dough that came out that we were using just now. You're gonna get it to feel like a really soft, uh, pliable Play-Doh dough. Um, it's really, it smells wonderful. It smells kind of, I mean like uh, tortilla dough. It's really, really uh, malleable, so you can uh, make any shape out of it. We're gonna go ahead and put this into a bowl and we're gonna go ahead and let it sit. It's not gonna do anything if it sits out at room temperature. Um, it has enough moisture that it won't dry out anything and we're gonna use it in about a minute or two so we can go ahead and set this aside for now. Let's go ahead and start on our filling. You need to refrigerate the dough or let it sit? You can go ahead and let the dough sit. Um, you do not need to uh, seal it. You don't need to put it in the refrigerator. Um, you don't need to put it under a warm uh, towel. This is not rising dough. It doesn't have yeast in it. Um, so it's just the dough that we're gonna fry up. So you can put it in a bowl, set it aside, don't really worry about it until you can get back to it in a, in a few minutes. So let's go ahead and work on our filling before we move on to the next step. Alrighty, so we're gonna go ahead and move on to our next step. Our next step is gonna be making our filling. Now, I did recommend to you guys, if you have a blender, use a blender. It's gonna make your life easier on cleanup. You're not gonna have to worry about making a mess everywhere and you put everything in one place instead of using 20 different bowls. So I'm gonna go ahead and for showing you purposes, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put it into a bowl, but I'm already starting up mine in a blender. But I'm gonna go ahead and do that here. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about our recipe, our ingredients for our filling. We are going to use 32 ounces of whole ricotta. So yesterday when I did this recipe, I noticed that there was two, it was asking for too much ricotta. So I went ahead and uh, did half the recipe. So I ended up doing just about, mm, 15 would be 30, 16 about 16 ounces of ricotta cheese. So I did half the amount of ricotta cheese. Uh, and then I did the rest of the recipe um, exactly the same. I just cut down on my ricotta cheese. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to do, uh, I'm gonna do it all in my blender here. So I'm gonna do, where am I? One cup of heavy whipping cream. I already have, the reason I'm pouring it straight into my blender is because I already have a measuring cup here on my blender that I can go ahead and see where I'm at. Alrighty, now the next thing I'm gonna go ahead and add is I am going to add my one and a half cups of powdered sugar. So I'm gonna go ahead and add one cup. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add the other half. Next part of the recipe is, I'm gonna add one fourth teaspoon of cinnamon. Oh, I have it right here. And then that's about it for now. Oh, and then our ricotta cheese. Can't forget the ricotta cheese. Ooh. OK, 
Okay, so I'm gonna put all that in my blender. And then I'm gonna go ahead and blend this on my uh, blender here, so that way I, can, I don't have to worry about using a hand mixer. If you are using a hand mixer, you're more than welcome to. Um, I would not for sure suggest you doing it by hand, you're trying to do whipped cream, but I will show you a different method on how to get this done, and let me show you really quick. So say you don't have a hand mixer or you don't have a blender on you, which is why you should be liking or sharing the video so you can try to enter to win a, um, a blender, you can go ahead and use your ready whipping mix uh, so, or, your, or your whipped cream. What you would do is you would just pour, uh, spray this into a bowl, add some ricotta cheese to it, add your chocolate chips and you're done. So this takes away that easy step or that hard step of making your whipped cream by hand you can already buy it made and it'll make your life a lot, lot easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and whip this up. To answer your question, yes. So if you are gonna be using the whole cat or the whole bucket, little 32 ounce of ricotta cheese, I would recommend using all of your whipped cream. Um, it's also gonna depend on how many uh, cannolis you're actually gonna make. So like today, I'm not gonna make 30 of them, so I wouldn't be using all of my filling. But if I were to be making 30 cannolis, I could probably use all of my ricotta and my whipped cream. So you can use all of your recipe. Um, you can also freeze it and kind of make it into an ice cream. The flavor is great, so it is there for you to use. Uh, it's up to you how you want to use it. But yes, you would, you would use a full can of whipped cream. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and get a spoon here, and I'm going to pour out my uh, whipped cream or my ricotta filling, cannoli filling, into a bowl and then I'm gonna fold in my chocolate chips. The reason I don't wanna throw my chocolate chips into my mixer or anything like that is because I don't wanna, I wanna use as many of those chunks of the chocolate chips in my filling. I don't wanna throw it into the blender and then it makes it into little pieces and I get like a chocolate chip looking filling and it's gonna turn brown and all that on me. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and if you see it, really thick, which is what exactly what you're looking for. Of course, never forget to taste it. Wow, that's really good. I honestly think that one's better than yesterday's. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and add chocolate chips. Now with this, this, I can't even talk. It does tell you to use three fourths cup of chocolate chips. You're more than welcome to use as many chocolate chips as you want. That is just a suggested amount on the recipe. Um, the reason I tell you is you can use whatever you like is because some people really like to use, really like chocolate chips. Some people really don't like chocolate chips. So what you're going to go ahead and do is all you're going to do is you're going to just fold in those chocolate chips into your filling. Now this filling can be used for multiple things. It doesn't have any eggs in it. Um, it just has pretty much like the whipped cream. So what I would say is you can use this for a cake filling. You can use it for your cannolis. 
You can put it inside of a donut. There's many different things you can use with this uh, cannoli filling. Uh, today we are using it for cannolis. All right, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm not gonna use this right now. I'm gonna go ahead because I wanna keep this cold so it stays thick as, as thick as possible. I'm gonna go ahead and stick this into my freezer until I use it, I'll pull it out and we'll go ahead and use it uh, as our filling. So I just put it in my bowl, my bowl here. I folded in all of my chocolate chips. I'm gonna stick it into the freezer until I fry up my cannoli shells. And then we'll go ahead and get a Ziploc bag and pipe it in and we'll be pretty much done. So let me go ahead and stick this into the freezer. All right, so our next step is going to be uh, rolling out our, if I can find, I'm just gonna do it by hand and I'm making a mess, it's okay. It's okay to make a mess in my kitchen because I'm the only one that cleans it. Okay, so now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna roll out our dough. We, I told you we were gonna take five minutes to get back to our dough, so don't really worry about it drying out. Let me go ahead and move that aside. This would be a perfect time to get your oil to start um, heating up. Your oil is gonna heat up about, you're gonna look for it about 400, uh, 350, 400 degrees. Um, I will recommend using vegetable oil. Vegetable oil is probably one of the best frying oils. Um, I know it's not the healthiest, but at this point, we're not looking for the healthiest because the filling's uh, pretty bad in itself. But hey, we're in it for a good time, right? All right, so we're gonna go ahead and use our um, cannoli cr uh, crust dough. Uh, what I like to do is I like to do it in individual pieces. I don't like to sit here and roll this whole thing out and then go and cut all of my cannoli shells. I like to do it in pieces so I can start dividing up my dough into little balls like this. All of them pretty much the same size. I would do them probably the size of a golf ball. Um, and then I would roll them out individually. So it is gonna take a little bit longer, but the thing you're gonna get guaranteed out of it is you're gonna get the thinness of your cannoli shell. So the thinness, you're, the, the thinness you're looking for your cannoli shell is the thinness of being able to lift it up and you can see the light through it. So it's really, really thin. You're not tearing through it, but you can see the light through it. That means it's really thin. And that's exactly what you're looking for. So I'll just stay here all day and I'll go ahead and roll out a bunch of these little balls, size of a golf ball. If not a golf ball, you can probably go like the size of a gumball or a big gumball. And then you can just go ahead and roll them out. You are gonna use a little bit of either flour or powdered sugar to roll these out. Now, I know you're thinking, well, how am I gonna fry these? What are they gonna look like? So a lot of people, or everybody, because I myself did not have cannoli molds. Um, they're a special kind of mold that you would find either on Amazon or at a restaurant store, but I can tell you that you can make your molds at home. So all you gotta do is get a little bit of foil and I'll show you how to do that now. So you're gonna grab a little bit of foil, probably the size about 12 inches by 12 inch square. And what you're gonna go ahead and do is you're gonna go ahead and fold it into a taco. like this, fold it into a taco, and then I'm gonna fold it one more time into a taco like this. And then I have it like this. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna roll it. And I know foil tends to be a lot harder to make into a perfect cylinder. So try your best on making it circular. Uh, the good thing is this part is not really gonna matter if it's completely circular. And I have some a bunch here because I've been using them. So I have a bunch of cannoli shells. I made these at home, they're perfect. I can re keep reusing them if I'd like. All right, so let's go ahead and roll them out. Remember, you are gonna wanna heat your oil to about 350 to 400 degrees. If you do not have a thermometer on you, it's okay. One, you can buy one at Walmart for like $1.50 and you use it for a lot of different purposes or you go ahead and pinch a piece out of your dough, a little piece, and you go ahead and just throw it into your oil, and it'll, you'll see it bubble up. If it's bubbling up really well, that means you're ready to go. You can throw your cannolis in there. So that's a, a quick way of not having a, a thermometer. You can throw a little piece of dough in there and just spoon it out, uh, and then you'll have, you'll know your, um, 
oil is ready for frying. All right, so let's go ahead and roll one of these out together so I can show you exactly what you're looking for. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little flour down. Remember, you can use flour, you can use powdered sugar, um, you can even use some cornstarch. I wouldn't use cornstarch just because the flavor tends to stay on there. Um, but powdered sugar or flour, you're already using flour, so you probably have it. You're already using powdered sugar, you already have it. Remember, you're gonna wanna roll this out really, really thin to the point where you can see the light through it, and I'll show you exactly what that looks like. So same thing, you would roll this out with a tortilla, like a tortilla. You could use a tortilla press if you like. It is up to you. All right. So you see here, I can see the light through it if I put it up. It's, I mean, it's not see-through, but I can definitely see the light through it. That is a perfect um, thin, thickness you want it. So you can see the light through. Now, that makes it easier when you do it in smaller pieces because you get it to uh, roll out a lot quicker. And then we're gonna go ahead and cut it. Now, when I recommend cutting your cannoli, you're not gonna wanna cut it where this thing overlaps like completely. You want pretty much the edges to touch just like that or a little overlap. You don't want it to go too crazy. So you can go ahead and use your roll, your cannoli mold right on top. And if you were to fold it over, it folds over pretty well, probably about an inch over. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna go ahead and use a glass because that's what I'm gonna use as a cookie cutter. Now, you might have a cookie cutter at home and you can use a cookie cutter, cutter if it makes it easier for you. I'm gonna use a glass because I like to use things that I know probably you wouldn't have, but you have a glass, so you can use a glass. All right, so what you're gonna go ahead and do is you're gonna get your cannoli shell and then you're gonna wrap your cannoli shell over. So usually I would say, you know what, just go ahead and pinch it on there and then it'll stay. The best way to make this stay so that your cannoli shell does not open is I would put a little bit of water on the edge and then put the uh, other side on top and then put a little bit more water on top so it kind of seals itself. This is a great method so that when you throw it into your oil, it doesn't open up on you and you get that circular shell, which is what this is gonna be. This is exactly the color you're looking for, a nice golden brown. It's almost the color of my hands, kind of, not really, but it is. Um, so you're looking for a nice golden color. If I put it against this, this is already too dark, my, my apron sleeve here. So a nice light color. So what, I'm gonna, what I suggest for you to do, hi Camille, uh, what I suggest you guys to do is as you're making these, whether you're gonna make two or 30 of them, Make sure you stick it into the fridge for about one to two minutes, up to 10 minutes. Say I'm gonna make 30 of them. As I'm going, I'm putting them in the fridge so they can harden up uh, because when I throw them into the oil, they'll tend to wanna open up and you're not gonna get that cannoli look that you're looking for. And I'll ha I have an example here. This one here didn't close all the way. There's still that gap in the middle, but I will tell you this one is a lot thicker. Um, it's not as thin as this one is and this one stayed shut. I have another one here that it opened up just at the very tip, so it almost made it. I do recommend putting some water on there to seal it shut, and then putting it in your fridge for about two to five minutes until you make your other shells or as you're going. Uh, and then when you're taking them out of the fridge, take the first one you put in there out first. Remember, you're gonna wanna put your oil at about 400, 350 to 400 degrees, you can check it by throwing a little piece in there and frying up your cannoli. Now, when you put your cannoli into the fryer, it is gonna tend to flip over. Why? I don't know. Um, so you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna use some tongs, which I have here. For one, you're gonna wanna grab your tongs and you're gonna wanna place it you're gonna to wanna to place them into your oil. Don't throw them in there by hand. Um, don't toss it in there. Use your tongs because the oil is really hot. Parents, this is where you're gonna to wanna to step in to help out. Um, you're gonna to wanna to dunk your cannoli in there. Now, it's gonna have the tendency of floating like this and then it's gonna turn around and it's only gonna cook one side. So your, my suggestion to you is use your tongs to either push it down 
or rotate your cannoli so it cooks really well. No? Oh, okay. So you're gonna either push it down or you're gonna rotate it so it cooks really well. You're gonna cook, if your uh, temperature is about 350 degrees to 400, you're gonna cook your cannoli in a matter of two to three minutes. It's gonna come out really, really quick. And it's gonna come out a nice golden color. Now, what I always recommend is whatever color it's inside of your oil, it's gonna darken by two shades outside when it dries. So if it looks a little golden brown tan, take it out because it's gonna turn out this color. If it looks this color inside, you're gonna get it and it's gonna turn even darker. So always remember that inside of the oil, it's gonna, out, after it dries, it's gonna turn two shades darker than what it is when you think and when it's ready. So you're gonna do it about two to three minutes and it'll cook fairly quickly. And you can go ahead and do all of them. I always recommend doing all your shells first so you can give it some time to cool. I'm not gonna go ahead and pipe my cannolis without letting it cool because then my cannoli is just gonna melt and it's not gonna, uh, it's not gonna stay inside. It's not gonna give you that perfect picture or the perfect cannoli. So let's go ahead and I have some already pre-made here. And I'm gonna grab a Ziploc bag and my filling so we can go ahead and fill these together. So we have our filling here that we just made not too long ago. It was sitting in our freezer so that it wouldn't uh, flatten out. All right, so I have a Ziploc here. Ooh, I don't know. That's a good question. I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna give an answer to that, but I have some extra dough and I have an air fryer. So I will try that and I will let you know. That's a good recommendation. I've never thought about that. Probably a healthier version of it too. So I don't know the answer, but I'll find out for you. Get back to me on that one. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and fill my um, cannoli filling. I'm gonna use a bag, because I could use a piping bag if I want, but I like to use things that you would have at home. And all I'm gonna do is cut the end off of this. All right, so I went ahead and cut the end off. This is gonna use as my piping bag. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill it. Oh, that filled up quick, because it's smaller. <clears throat> I'm gonna go ahead and start filling my cannolis here. Now, I'm gonna use this open one, why? Because I'm gonna eat it anyway. Even though it doesn't look perfect, I'm still gonna eat it. Same thing with this bigger one. There, just like that. And what I'm gonna do to add a special touch to my cannolis, let me move off this out of the way because I'm about to finish. I'm gonna put a plate here for you all. Can you see the plate? I think you can. Bring it back just a little bit. All right, so I have my plate here. I'm gonna go ahead and plate them with you. I'm gonna grab these balls out of the way. I put some chocolate chips in a little bowl here just to give it that extra presentation and I want a little extra chocolate chips on the side. I'm gonna put the mini chocolate chips I added into it and I'm gonna put them on my edge of my cannolis. Look at that. Beautiful. Woo! I'm kind of glad Facebook didn't work on me yesterday because these came out just as pretty as yesterday. So I'm excited. Oh, I broke it. I talked too soon. The good part is it closed up, so it works. Maria is asking if they need to be eaten the same day or if they'll get stuck if they're left for another day. Um, Maria, they will last probably about 12 hours. Um, you could probably make them the night before and they should be okay. Um, 
I would leave them in a cool place. I probably would leave them probably in the fridge. Um, they should last about 12 hours, um, give or take. I wouldn't go a full 24 hours. They probably would sog up. Um, what you could do is make your shells and then make your filling and kind of refrigerate your filling because it is milk. And then whenever you're going to take them somewhere or you're going to go somewhere, take a bag with you and you can fill them right then and there or you fill them before you leave. Um, that way it's kind of at the moment you're filling them up and they're going to eat them within the next hour or something. So you can go ahead and use that option, whatever you like. And then to go ahead and finish off our cannoli, I am going to grab a little bit of powdered sugar. And this would be just for presentation. Say you're doing this for a dinner party or you're doing this uh, for a bunch of kiddos and you want the presentation, get a little bit of powdered sugar, put it on your finger and then just um, sprinkle it on top to give it that extra. You can even get, if you want to get really fancy, you can get a sifter and sift some powdered sugar on there if you like. And we are done with our cannolis. Look at that. Beautiful, simple cannolis. Yes, I understand I'm a chef and it would take me 10 minutes to do, but I try to make the easiest, simplest recipes for you guys to do at home to recreate. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. We can always answer those questions for you. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you for waiting one more day to enjoy these amazing cannolis. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel and also <clears throat> Thank you, Diana. I appreciate it. They are amazing. I guarantee you're going to love them. Uh, we have our YouTube channel, Culinary Camp Puga. Make sure you subscribe. Also, share and like this video. We do have another bundle giveaway of a blender and a hand mixer to give away. So make sure you share and like this video. Um, and congratulations to Diana. She was our first winner of our first bundle here on Camp Puga. You guys have a great rest of your Monday, and we'll see you next week. I will be posting the next recipe either later on tonight or tomorrow and we'll see you next weekend guys have a good one see you next time